<laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Features at Play. This week we are featuring the beautiful Gibbsland region, as well as sharing our favourite advice and tips on caring for your dog. It's a feature packed show full of fun and helpful info and Darcy is pumped. So am I, so don't go anywhere because you won't want to miss a thing. No. There's little ears. I know. Flappers. Hey, That's Jumbo. Really cool. Flappers. This week's breed in focus is the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, affectionately known as the Cavi. Originating from the United Kingdom where they were used to warm laps during cold carriage rides and while waiting about in chilly castles. A fancy dog. <laughs> they are, they're affectionate, they're happy, they're outgoing like beautiful Bo here. They love human company and an ideal companion dog. They're playful, they're willing to please, and while they're generally good with children, they do not appreciate rough handling, so they need to be supervised around young kids. The breed comes in a variety of colours, including tan and white like Bo, black and tan, red and white, tricoloured and mahogany red, which is my favourite with a medium to long coat and a life expectancy of about 9 to 14 years. The Cavi is an intelligent and usually easy to train breed. They respond best to gentle, positive training methods though. As with many smaller dogs, they tend to develop behavioural problems if they're allowed to get away with misbehaving. So setting clear and consistent boundaries from the get-go will help, as it does with any dog, of course. They require a daily walk and family play sessions to keep them active and stimulated. These guys are not excessive barkers, but they're certainly no, they're <laughs> yeah. certainly no guard dog, as they'll greet most people very warmly. They generally get along with everyone, including cats and other smaller pets. They do need, however, lots of companionship, particularly if they were used to keep laps warm. Yeah. So they are not a dog to be left alone all day, or they will become stressed and can develop separation anxiety. Cavaliers are okay with a smaller living environment, and they suit families with children or older owners. They're an average shedder, they require regular brushing, and can be prone to tangling and matting on their ears. Their eyes and inside of their ears need to be regularly inspected for cleaning and to avoid infection. Yeah, that's right. The cavies are prone to a number of health issues, including heart diseases um, and other conditions, eye diseases, syringomyelia, which is uh, fluid-filled cavities in the spinal cord of the neck, allergic skin disease and ear infections, as we mentioned. So to get a quote from Bow Wow Meow, pet insurance specific to the cavy, or to cover your own dog for illness and injury, visit their website. And if you'd like to find out more about the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, and if it's compatible with your lifestyle, check out the Bow Wow Meow Breed Selector tool on there as well. And they snore. They snore real loud. <laughs> hey, Bozy. Yeah, you oh, having now. a good sleep? I think he was snoring even when he was awake. <laughs> I'm a big advocate of crate training dogs because when it's done right, it provides your dog with a safe and secure, happy place that they can go to when they want to rest or if they're feeling a little anxious. It helps keep your dog safe and it prevents escaping while travelling or during thunderstorms and fireworks too, which is really handy. It also helps with toilet training puppies as dogs generally don't like to soil in their beds and it helps prevent your dog of course from wandering around in the middle of the night unsupervised where they may sneak off and eliminate. Putting a puppy in their crate for some alone time also helps them to learn not to expect constant human attention. When you purchase a crate for your dog size is important. Your dog should be able to stand up in it, they should be able to lie down, they should be able to turn around. They should be able to sit like Darcy is here, but you don't want it so large that it removes that sense of security they feel from it or that they can actually eliminate in one end and sleep in the other because that's going to slow down the toilet training process. If you do want to get one that your puppy will still be able to use as an adult dog, then you put something to block off one side of it. There are three common types of crates, from wire crates to soft crates and airline carriers. I prefer the wire crates like the Lexi and Me one here because it's nice and open and it's really easy for crate training because as you can see, I can just drop the treats in here and make it a really positive association. And if I want to cover it over, then of course I can put a blanket over the top to provide some warmth and security as well. To crate train your dog, it must be done slowly and positively. You start by placing the crate in a central area where your dog is really comfortable. So to start off, you might have it in the lounge room where the family's there as well. So your dog still feels part of it all. And then you do it just really slowly using treats like I'm doing with Darcy here. So it really starts to create that positive association. What we want to make sure as well is don't let kids uh, climb all over it. If your dog's in there, give them space because we really want this to become their stress-free environment. 
You keep it open for a while, but then what you do is really praise them every time they're in there. And once they're getting comfortable, you might start to shut the door, but you never lock them in there. So while they're still feeling comfortable, you can keep the door shut. And then as they gradually build up their confidence and are really happy going in there, you can obviously shut it for longer and longer periods of time. Really, the aim is that the dog will start to take itself to their crate when they're feeling tired or if things are getting a bit too much for them. So it's always that nice, positive association. Good boy, Darcy. You can check out the range of crates, including the Lexi and Me wire crates at your local pet stock store. They also have wire play pens if you want to give your puppy a little bit more room to move during the day but still want to keep it in a contained space. If you do need some help with puppy training, ask about joining puppy school at pet stock as well. Darcy, you're doing very well in your crate there. Good boy. Yes. You like your crate, don't you? Road tripping out of Melbourne is just fantastic. If you go west, you can hit Ballarat. If you go south, well, that's the Great Ocean Road. And then there's the Mornington Peninsula. And if you want to just chill out in some beautiful farmland, well, then you just go north. For me, in this instance, the compass is pointing me east to the beautiful Gippsland region. So far, the countryside is looking stunning. The main centre in Gippsland is Barnsdale. It's a pretty riverside town with a laid-back country feel and also a gateway to both the coast and alpine areas of eastern Victoria. When you're travelling through country Victoria, make sure you help out the small local businesses. Go to a bakery or a corner store. Buy local produce that you can cook back at the van. I'm about to go and get a coffee from this corner store. Looks like it's going to be good. Being surrounded by farmland, the local produce is fantastic. There's also a thriving arts community and plenty for outdoor enthusiasts. This is the East Gippsland Rail Trail. It goes for about 100 kilometres from here all the way to Orbs. Now, it's great for a walk or a bike ride, and you don't have to do it all at once. You can break it up and do it over a week or so. But being 100 k's, I don't really have time for that. But I know there's a really good 5k walk just over here. You're a sport for choice for places to take a walk with your pooch. There's loads of parks and walkways where you can get out, stretch your legs, have some exercise, and take in some of this beautiful scenery. Is the always popular Lakes Entrance, a beautiful waterfront town. Whenever you arrive somewhere new, it's always a good idea to find a lookout so you can get your bearings. And then when you've got the lay of the land, you can work out where to next. And for me, I'm going to head down there to that jetty. There's no wonder why this is a favourite destination for the caravan and camping crowd. It's loaded with things to do, the scenery is spectacular, of course the beach is the main attraction, here you can swim, fish, go for a run or take the dog for a walk, which is my favourite. There's loads of dog friendly parks and beaches all across the region. Now there's rules as to whether you can have your dog on the leash or off the leash depending on the time of year, so the best thing to do is check out the council website or just look out for signs. Now this would be the perfect spot to play with your poochie. There's heaps of room, it's beautiful, it's a little rugged, kind of like me. In 2020, you can get your fix by checking out the virtual show that the caravanning industry Victoria is running. It's going to be awesome. Biting, mouthing and chewing is one of the most common complaints of new puppy owners. It's really important though to remember that puppies explore the environment with their mouths. They also use their mouths in play and also they need to chew and mouth when they're teething. So it's important that we don't stop them but we redirect it in the right way. Now one way of doing this is to allow your puppy to get out and play with other puppies because that's how they learn to inhibit their bite. If one puppy plays a bit too hard and gives a bite that's a bit too much for the other dog, they generally yelp, and that's when the play stops. So the puppy learns that by biting too hard, there is no fun to be had. So it's a good way for them to learn how to inhibit their bite. Puppies, of course, are renowned for chewing your socks, your sneakers, the kids' toys, your underwear. And this is because it smells like us and they don't know any difference. So we can't punish them or tell them off because they do need to chew. Give them something that they can actually get their teeth into that's designed for puppies. These are the Vitapet soft chicken tender chews. So this is really good when they're teething in particular or if they just want to really get into something. We give them an appropriate chew to get their teeth stuck into instead of our hands. Now, the other thing to do as well is to make sure that we redirect it. So the best thing to do is either remove them, just giving them 
no access to your hands at all and certainly not encouraging it, but instead diverting it. So when your puppy goes to bite your hand, you have to get the timing really right. You instead get the treat or a chew toy, something that they can get their teeth into instead, into their mouth so they're connecting with that first and not your hand. The other really important thing to do is just not encourage them to bite when they're a puppy. Make sure if the kids are playing with the dog and it starts to bite them, stand up, remove access, get their hands away, totally ignoring it. Do not give the dog what it wants. The dog, again, soon learns that when they're not allowed to actually connect with you and all the fun stops, then they learn that that's a behaviour that they're not meant to be doing. Now these chews are really good because as I said you can leave them alone if you crate train your puppy which I really recommend. You can leave them alone so they can use it as an occupier as well and it just really gets their jaws moving so that's another really good one too. Remember that puppies don't grow out of problem behaviour they grow into it so let's set them up right from the very beginning. To find more puppy tips or to find out about the Vita Pet puppy treat range visit their website. The Jet Pets Companion Animal Rescue Award celebrates and recognises those that are doing work in the pet rescue area and much more, and I'm a proud ambassador for this year's awards. Cathy, tell me, why did you start these awards? Well, Lara, every year 186,000 pets are left unclaimed in shelters mm. around Australia. However, the good news is there's over a thousand rescue groups and shelters supported by thousands of volunteers <laughs> who do an amazing job in giving pets a second chance in a loving home. That's right. And in terms of these awards, who are they open to? Is it anyone involved in pet rescue? Pretty much, Lara, yes. So um, whether you are a staff member or volunteer at a rescue group or animal shelter or a council-run animal shelter, mm -hmm. or whether you're a pet adopter like me or a foster carer, um, you can enter these awards. And what are some of the categories that are open to people? Well, we have 10 categories, mm -hmm. um, eight of those are for industry. Okay. So we're really looking for a whole range of um, excellence and innovation uh, in rescue. Uh, but we also have a category just for pet adopters, so they can share their pet adoption story. Nice. And this year we also have a category for foster carers. Oh, lovely. Because they play such an important role in rehabilitating pets. So what are some of the key dates, because they do happen annually, can uh, people keep an eye out for? Um, yes, so open for entries, uh, usually on the 1st of May for a couple of months till about July. And then we announce the finalists in September. And what about for the people at home that might have adopted a pet? What are you looking for there? Well, we're looking for wonderful stories of transformation. So it could be um, you've adopted a pet mm -hmm. and how has that pet transformed since you brought it home? Yes. And also, how has the pet made a difference to your life? Mm and uh, we've had received incredible stories in the past. In fact, uh, one of our winners was this lady Sally and her cat, Sandy. They adopted the cat from RSPCA Victoria and only a couple of years after having the cat, Sandy, they discovered in the middle of the night that Sandy was pouring um, Sally, the mother, on the face mm. in the middle of the night and she's saying, Go away, Sandy, it's too early for breakfast. Why, why are you pouring me? But anyway, they said, oh, we can't ignore this. So they got up, followed Sandy into her son's bedroom. Her son was having an epileptic oh, fit. wow. And they had no idea that he had epilepsy. Oh, amazing. Called the ambulance and the cat, Sandy, sat under the stretcher. Oh, wow, that's like go. pretty amazing. Yeah. We often hear about the work that dogs are doing in that, but certainly that's the first cat one I've heard, I think. Yes, All yes. Right. Well, that's pretty amazing. If you've got a story to tell, it doesn't have to be that extreme, does it? But uh, if you'd like to find out more about the Rescue Awards, visit their website, rescueawards.com.au. Keeping our pets safe and cool during warm weather is a really important part of being a responsible pet owner. If it's too hot for you to be walking, sitting or running outside, then it's definitely too hot for our dogs. Unlike us humans, they can't sweat to cool themselves down, so it can lead to heat stroke really quickly, which then in turn leads to multiple organ dysfunction. Now also, this is a really important reason why we should never leave our dogs in a car during hot weather. 
in about 10 minutes, they can skyrocket by about 20 degrees. So even if your windows are down and you're parked in the shade, our dogs are still at risk. Another common mistake I see all the time is people taking their dogs out for a walk or a run in the middle of the day. This is far too hot for most dogs. We should be taking them in the morning or the afternoon when the sun has gone down a bit. Before you take your dog out, always make sure that you check how hot the ground is as well. And you need to at least be able to leave your hand down comfortably for at least five seconds, ideally 10. If it's hot or you have to move it away, then it's too hot for your dog's paws and they can really easily blister and get them into trouble quite quickly. So always check the ground. Puppies are even more susceptible, so please do always make sure you do this check. If your dog is looking uncomfortable, either sitting in the heat or if you are out and about, then cool them down straight away with tap water, not ice cold water. But you can pour ice cubes as well into a water bowl so they can lick that and get themselves down comfortably. Always ensure that your dog has plenty of cool water, shade and is kept in a well ventilated area. Sunscreen on their nose is also a good idea and keep them away from long grasses and rocky areas where snakes like to hide. If you do suspect that your dog is suffering from heat stroke or a snake bite or even a tick bite, then get them straight to your vet and visit poochesatplay.com for more tips to help. Knowing how to choose the best diet for your dog is not always easy. That's why I've done the hard work for you in my new book, Eat, Play, Love Your Dog. I also cover off training tips, brain games, how to build a bond with your dog and how to look after your dog's health from puppyhood through to end of life. Available nationally in bookstores, online and pet stock stores. Visit poochesatplay.com for more details. Since my time on Pooches at Play, I have learned lots about the important role that diet plays in our dog's health, particularly when it comes to raw feeding. Now, Narelle, this is definitely an area of your expertise. What do we need to consider when it comes to this? Well, to start with, a healthy and balanced diet is fundamental for providing the building blocks that our dogs need for optimal wellness. Unfortunately, dogs are starting to follow in our footsteps in terms of the chronic health conditions that they're suffering from. And much of the time, this can be traced back to the type of diet that the average pet dog is being fed. What type of diet do you believe is best for our dogs? Uh, as a clinical naturopath, we know that consuming food as close to its natural source as possible is our best bet for improving health and preventing disease in both ourselves and our dogs. So that's why I support uh, a natural raw food diet. It's going to provide a stronger immune system, less digestive problems, healthier coat and skin, great for weight management and even improved cognitive abilities. I do acknowledge that for many pet owners, feeding kibble is necessary for a variety of reasons. So the best thing that they can do to improve the quality of whatever diet they're feeding is to add in some whole foods. This should include things like muscle meats, uh, a variety of different organ meats, so liver, kidney, things like that. Plant matter, which provides an amazing array of phytonutrients, which is particularly important for our dog's immune systems, for detoxification and for cellular health. And it's also important to add smaller amounts of those nutrient-dense foods, such as eggs, we've got fatty fish, chia seeds, pre and probiotics, turmeric, just to name a few, and to rotate through everything. Many dog owners will feed just, say, cooked chicken with some vegetables and rice. Unfortunately, that type of diet is highly unbalanced and deficient in a whole range of nutrients that our dogs need for long-term health and wellness. What would you recommend? I love that I can go and buy some commercial raw patties from my local pet shop, such as Big Dog. Yep. Got the box here. So what I love about the Big Dog, for example, is it's complete and balanced. So pet owners can have complete peace of mind that their dogs are getting everything they need from a nutritional standpoint. Big Dog doesn't add anything synthetic into their foods, so that's going to promote good gut health, stronger immune system, make our dogs less likely to suffer from allergies and skin conditions in the first place. The ingredients used in Big Dog is human grade, which is really important, and they use a great variety of different ingredients in their patties. And a lot of dog owners are actually quite afraid to feed their dogs whole raw bones. So in the patties, that's already crushed up, so the, your dogs are going to get all the calcium they need without any of the risk. That's awesome. Now, for people who are still going to have a kibble diet for their dogs, mm. but they maybe want to introduce something like Big Dog, mm. what can they do? The first thing they need to do is make sure that they reduce the amount of kibble that they're feeding. So we don't want to increase total calories and cause unhealthy weight gain. So you need to know how many calories are in your dog's daily kibble portion. And it's super easy to see on the Big Dog label how many calories are in each patty. 
And the next most important thing is for people to take it slowly. There's no rush. And by taking things gradually, we minimise the likelihood of any stomach upsets and allows those fussier dogs to adapt to the new food without any problems. There's enormous benefits to be had from feeding part kibble and part raw, which is how I started out with my own dogs. If you'd like to find out more of the benefits of giving Big Dog to your dog, check out their website. Thanks. Thank you. It's important to ensure your dog is protected from parasites all year round. NextGuard Spectra provides your dog with the most complete parasite protection against fleas, ticks, mites, heartworm and intestinal worms available in just one monthly chew. With one chew, NextGuard Spectra helps protect your dog from the most harmful tick species in Australia, paralysis tick, bush tick and brown dog tick, for a full month. So you can have peace of mind that your dog will be protected both at home and should you go away travelling. Heartworm disease is a very serious and potentially fatal disease found in all mainland states of Australia. NextGuard Spectra, given monthly throughout the year, will help prevent your dog from getting heartworm disease. The tasty beef flavoured chew is easy to give your dog and can be given with or without food. NextGuard Spectra can be used in dogs from 8 weeks of age and greater than 2 kilograms. That's about half of Darcy here. Beach, bush or the dog park, we love getting out with our dogs. So make it easy with NextGuard Spectra and don't let parasites get in the way of their healthy, happy lives. Ask for NextGuard Spectra at your local pet stock store or visit the NextGuard website for more information. As a pet stock rewards member, if you purchase any participating brand of flea, tick and worming treatment, including NextGuard Spectra, they'll give you 15% brand cashback to use the next time you shop for the same brand, even if it's on promotion. Visit the website for details. Would you like to win a Porsome prize pack valued at over $2,500 for you and your pooch? One lucky winner will win this amazing prize, including a year's supply of Vitapet treats, Big Dog Pet Foods, NextGuard Spectra Monthly Chews, and DGG grooming products and tools, as well as a $250 pet stock gift card, Lexi and Me memory foam bed, and a brand new DGG wardrobe. Two runners up will also receive a $500 Vitapets treat package. Simply tell us in 50 words or less how your furry friend shows their love for you. Visit the Pooches at Play website to enter. You know, Morgs, it's pretty amazing how nature regenerates after those bushfires went through these towns. Yeah, and it's these small towns that were probably most affected by COVID-19 because no one could travel. That's right, so that's why it's really important when it's safe to get back to the regional centres, support those local communities. Yeah, for sure. Now that this episode's over, go to gomakesomememories.com.au and book your next trip away with your pooch. Oh, that's going to be fun. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week. See you guys.